Hello fellow heroes and welcome back to another Glaive build which many of you may have been waiting for. Talks about Glaives have started to pick up as of lately because of their vampire damage reduction in PvP and how slightly unfun they are to face against. Luckily this isn't the case here as we focus primarily on PvE content. So what do we have in store for today's build you may ask? Well, what do you think about Master Bacchus? A great movement exotic that's more useful in PvP than PvE right? Now what if I told you that we can get an Art Glaive to do 35k per shot within this magazine for a total of 210k via Nesrax Whisper? You will say that I'm a liar, but it is honestly quite powerful when actually pulled off. So let me show you how to pull this off and why you may want to give this combat a try in the near future. But before we do that, you know who else loves Glaives? This channel right here. So why not leave a like, a sub and turn on your notification for more content like this in the future, I would really appreciate it. To start with the subclass, we will be using Revenant and from here the aspects and fragments used will improve our stasis effects so that we can do more damage for longer. We are going to be using the same setup as we used last time for our renewals grabs loadout, considering how powerful it is. For us to do good damage from low tier to end game content, we need to make sure we utilize our Glacier Grenade and Light Shift ability from Bacchus to create the killer combo. This won't always work, but when it does, you can really melt things quickly. So let's look at what we are using first. You'll want Touch of Winter Aspect which will give you an increased radius on dust field grenades and a stasis crystal the moment it is formed. You'll then want Grim Harvest Aspect as you want to collect as many stasis shards as possible for both regening mid regeneration and abilities overall via elemental shards. Next you'll want Whisper Endurance for increased slow and freeze time on combatants. Whispers of Shard which will allow us to destroy stasis crystals for quick regen charge rate. Whispers of Rending for a 42.5% kinetic damage increase against frozen combatants, Whispers of Conduction for making stasis shards track to you when nearby, and then Whispers of Hunger for increased melee energy gain from collected stasis shards. For stats, we have 18 Mobility, 17 Resilience, and 18 Discipline. These here are the ones you want to focus on as much points as possible, as the build will require you to use your Mobility via Exotic, Resilience for that extra damage reduction, and Discipline for faster grenade spam. If you can reach 100, then do so, but if not, do not worry. Key mods to have here are Elemental Shards for turning Stasis Shards into Wells, Elemental Armors for allowing our Stasis Weapon to create Wells and Kills, Font of Wisdom for a plus 50 in Intellect, a Powerful Friends for a plus 20 in Mobility and additional purposes, and lastly Elemental Life for creating Wells on Super Kills. Although the stats looks bad and the build looks pretty basic, out in the field it can pull us weight in very hard content against many combatants you face. The light shift and glacier grenade combo is what will define how the build plays out and as long as you do this properly you're always going to be doing high damage no matter what you face and it's pretty safe to use so you can use grenades to freeze and mobility to dodge out of danger or even use a shield but however you do this it will benefit you in the long run. For weapons, you're going to need stasis and a glaive weapon. ID for the glaive has got to be arc as we want to make use of that light shift bonus for arc weapons after a dodge. For primary, add the single patient 53 pulse rifle with moving target and headstone. And like I mentioned before, it's a great weapon to focus on and craft for stasis based builds. You'll want ID to get outlaw instead of moving target, but if not, then the following is just fine. If you haven't already, you should also try to get the dungeon pulse as well, as that can roll some pretty good perks as well. But it also hits quite hard in terms of quick damage done, so depending on what you like the most, you have two options to work towards. For secondary, we have Nesrax Whisper with Demolitions and Unstoppable Force, and you want to get this roll if you want to pull off some crazy stuff that I do. A demo is great for the build as we can build up grenade energy quickly without fully specking into our discipline via armor, while Unstoppable Force will increase our projected damage by an extra 30% if our shields get hit while blocking. All of this basically allows us to do heavy damage per projectile as long as we have the area set up correctly. However, I do recommend you try and get the Auxiliary Reserves perk for the first slot so you can increase your shield duration. This will make the build overall feel unstoppable for you even when you don't have any damage buffs going but can survive for longer. You can use a Solar or Void Glaive as well, but the Light Shift ability won't give you that extra 10% damage increasement, so really think through before proceeding. Or just get Nezax Whisper with Vorpal if you are unable to get Unstoppable Force instead. For Heavy we have the Hot Head with Tracking and Lasting Impression, which is a great perk combo to have in terms of inflicting high damage in one go. Combined with Light Shift, and we can get the weapon to do a 50-55k damage 
But if we get stages applied to it, we can easily hit this 60k or more. But remember, a lasting impression has a delay before exploding, so it's not guaranteed to get a really high damage number under some circumstances. Still, overall a great weapon to carry if you have one on spare. For your stats, as mentioned, we want to cover mobility, resilience and discipline, and perhaps strength, but not by a lot. I don't plan on getting our stats all to 100 here, as there's quite a few things that hunters have to worry about in terms of which key skills they highly rely on. So to start, mobility can stay at 80, as the cooldown rate is relatively high, and since there is a delay with using exotic, the weight isn't that bad as we won't be spamming it back to back. If you have the power fence mod, then do add that on to help, but if not, then try and get armor with at least 10 to 20 within his mobility stats, and then add on whatever else to make up the difference. Resilience now is at 70, and though we can go for max 100 for the huge damage reduction, I only recommend you do this if you can. If you can't reach it, then aim as high as possible, but not too high to where you're missing out on other key stats as well. The discipline for the build is at 80, and you can also get this to 100 if you don't have key perks or mods to further help you out. Whispers of Shards and Touch of Winter will be needed here as it will greatly speed up the cooldown rate of your grenades, and if you can get a primary or secondary with demo on it, even better. This is why I've left mine at 80 as going any more won't make a huge difference, and adding on elemental worlds in the mix will greatly improve our chances even further with little effort. And leftover wise, we have Stasis Siphon mod for allowing us to create orbs of power via Stasis Weapon Kills, Glaive Ammo Finder for more Glaive Ammo and Pickup, Invigoration for increased mini energy on all power collection, Rocket Scavenger for increased rocket reserves, Solar Formation where increase the damage and range of solar ignitions, and Revitalizing Blast where stunning a champion will cause an ignition. Now with the main bases covered, let's take a look at the mods we are using and how they play within the builds. For head we have Mobility, Glaive Ammo Finder, Stasis Siphon and Elemental Shards mod, Arm we have Mobility and Elemental Armors mod, Chest we have Mobility, Cacus of Dampner, Armor the Dying Sun and Frontal Wisdom mod, Leg we have Rocket Scavenger, Invigoration and Powerful Friends mod, Cloak we have Minor Recovery, Revitalizing Blast, Solar Formation and Elemental Light mod. So I know not a lot of people would want to give Mouse Cabascos a try in PvE, because why would you when well, you can get big but simple buffs via Void and Solar now? Plus, Backwards is more useful in PvP as a movement exotic rather than something in PvE to use where you would rather use big damage builds with huge synergy. But this is why I would recommend you let your hair down a bit and give this setup a try as it might be useful next season or give you something else to try. We have done a build like this in the past before with Cold Heart and it was a mixed bag for some people who complained that there is no point in using Backwards and Endgame content. That point still stands, but you're free to use what you like, and in fact I've used this in GMs to see if it sticks, and truth be told, it does work. So how do you use this? As mentioned before, you will need to activate Light Shift, Unstoppable Force, and then freeze the target all in one go, and this may sound tough to do at first, but it's actually quite easy thanks to our shield and the damage reduction it gives. From testing I was able to get around 35k from a single projectile, but this was against just one target. If I did this in a more live environment while I'm getting attacked by a third party, while the given target is frozen, then you could pull this off a lot more damage in a short time frame. I'm talking with 6 rounds and all buffs active, we can amass 210k in total for max damage, in which case an unstoppable champion is enough for us to outright kill them or weaken them. And this can be done with majors or ultras as well, even bosses can get some heavy hits if the fight is within your favour. This isn't meant to be a DPS Kingglaive build though, or some amazing endgame build that everyone should be using, but rather a fun take with using glaives and showing off how powerful they can get through just one simple method. Of course there is better ways of getting higher damage from glaives, but this one here is showing off the synergy you can have with the two things that many people look down on. You can use this in endgame and it is strong enough for you to compete in GMs. But it's not a game changer, and I do not recommend new players to use this in such content until they master the basics. Once you have done that, then the build will really open up for you, and you will see just how fun it can be with using glaives in general. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with more general Destiny news and builds. Once again, thanks for stopping by, I'll see you on the next one.